Okay, so if we agree, I will start this webinar today by, it's the first time we have two speakers at the same time, so it's a, a novelty for us. <laughs> today we have with us Clement Dimonin. Uh, I'm just going to take uh, the notes I have here. Clementine is an agriculture engineer graduated from AgriSoup Dijon. She is the co-author of the book Line Marcher, written in 2019, and is currently the director of the INET, that is the, the National Institute of Working Equity in France, where she works on several technical and scientific projects, including National Socioeconomic Observatory of Working Equities. Clementine, thank you so much for joining us today. And we also have Dominique Fouvet who is an agriculture engineer graduated from Bordeaux Science Agro. She has been working on the Cool Line pro project since 2020 and is currently employed by the SFET, that is the Société Française des Équipes de Travail, where she works on several other technical and scientific projects, including working equities, characterization, and wealth. Dimitri, thank you so much for, for accepting our invitation and welcome. Um, Clementine, are you happy to share your screen with us? Yes, good evening. Uh, maybe Domitil can speak too uh, for the people to see her, <laughs> and then I will share my screen. Okay, perfect. Domitil, if you want uh, to share. Yes, uh, thank you for, for the invitation, and I hope uh, it, will be, uh, it will be interesting for you. Okay, I will try to share my screen. Do you see it? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So Domitil and I, we are very happy to be with you to talk about uh, donkeys in French market gardening farms. We have a lot of things to say, so I hope we won't be too long and you will be able to ask a few questions after our speech. Uh, but if you have a question uh, while we are speaking, you can use the chat box, I think, and uh, we will answer later. So first, let me tell you a few words about INET, where, where I am working. Uh, INET is the National Institute of Working Equids, Institut National des Equidés de Travail. It's a brand new member of FECTU, and it's a very young organization because it was created in 2021. Uh, but before INET, uh, there was INAM, Institut National Azin et Mulassier, National Institute of uh, Donkeys and uh, Mules. But we wanted to work with horses too. So now there is INET. And uh, its goal is to increase knowledge about draft horses, territory horses and ponies, donkeys and mules. Why am I talking about draft horses, territory horses and ponies? This is because we work with another organization called SFET, Société Française des Equidés de Travail, French Society of Working Equids, which represents 26 um, working equid breeds. So we don't work with uh, saddlebred horses or race horses, for example, but only with um, nine draft horses breeds, nine territory uh, horses and ponies breeds, and eight donkeys breeds. So we don't have the time to uh, tell you about each one of those breeds, but you can see them uh, on this map. You can see that we have a lot of colors, small donkeys, big donkeys, hairy donkeys, uh, all are very nice. And if you want uh, to know more about them, you can go on our website, Energy Cheval, and uh, you will learn uh, a lot about them. So first, I will present you a panorama of uh, market gardening with donkeys in uh, France. Then I will tell you about, about our donkey school. And then Domitil will uh, talk about our Kulan project, which is a research project about donkey collars. And uh, she, will, she will tell you about other uh, projects we have. So 
So first, uh, a little panorama of market gardening with donkeys. France is the third producer of vegetables and fruits in the European Union. Fruits and vegetables represent 11% of the French agriculture and around 530,000 hectares are dedicated to fruits and vegetables in France. Of course, donkeys are not involved in the production of all those fruits and uh, vegetables. In the old times, old farms had animals to produce food, but as you know, there was a dramatic decrease. And uh, since several years, donkeys are coming back slowly uh, in farms. In 2014, we made a study and we found about uh, 50 farms with working donkeys. I think we didn't find uh, all of them, but uh, since we are monitoring this activity, and now we are able to show you some numbers from a study we made uh, in 2021 and uh, 2020. So we found about uh, 150 farms with working donkeys in market gardening. Uh, you can see them uh, on the map. But uh, again, we think we didn't find uh, all of them. Uh, those are mostly small farms. There are big farms, but uh, even when they are big, only a small area is uh, used uh, to produce uh, food with a donkey uh, working. So less than uh, one uh, hectare. Um, most of them have a quality certification, mainly organic farming. And a lot of uh, those farms have other activities. It may be agricultural activities or non-agricultural activities. For example, uh, tourism with a guest house or activities for children. Why do those people work with donkeys? First, because they like the link with the animals, they like working with donkeys. Then, because donkeys produce less pollution, they make less damage to the soil, they have technical advantages, they are small, accurate, and you don't need to buy fuel for them to work. The cost of a donkey uh, can be of uh, 500 uh, euros, or it can be 2,500 uh, euros if you buy a donkey, uh, a pure breed donkey, which is already uh, trained. And you have to buy uh, tools and equipment too, to work with a donkey. So it can uh, range from uh, 200 euros if you buy an old tool from your neighbor, for example, um, up to 20,000 euros if you buy a lot of uh, brand new tools. Then uh, the cost of uh, a donkey in a year is less than 1,000 euros with uh, food uh, veterinary bills, for example. So it's uh, not uh, very expensive, but donkeys are weaknesses too. They have limited power. There is a lack of tools. You need specific handling skills to work with the donkeys. You need more time, and sometimes you need more staff. Uh, for example, if you want to work with two donkeys at the same time. It's a physical work, and you need pastures and accommodation for your donkey as well. Farmers, they are of all ages. 40% of them are women. And most of them have followed a specific training uh, to work with donkeys. Donkeys are one or two in each farm. Sometimes there are more, but uh, it's not very often. They are of all breeds, small donkeys or big donkeys, all colors. And some of them, but not all, have followed the yeah. training, a specific yeah. training before being bought to be a market gardening donkey. Speaking of training, I will uh, talk about our donkey school, ENAM, 
École nationale des âmes maraîchers. This is a school which is located in an area with a lot of market gardening farms, and it has three main purposes. To educate donkeys, to train gardeners and future gardeners, and to take part in innovation. So the donkeys, they are young male donkeys owned by French breeders. They are only from the eight French breeds and they are already educated and able to pull. At school, they are taught to be a gardener donkey and then they can be sold to a human trainee in adequation with his or her project. So here, the aim of the school is to valorize male donkeys, especially from the dairy farms and to encourage pure breed donkey production. When I say that the donkeys are already educated and able to pull, this is because they have to pass some tests, which are part of PEGET, Parcours d'excellence du jeune équidé de travail. This is a national evaluation system for the 26 breeds. So before entering school, the donkeys have to pass a temperament test, body and gait characterization test, elementary work test, and a pulling test. So they pass all those tests when they are one year old, two years old, three years old, and then they can enter the school. The people who come to the school uh, may be future farmers, or they, they may be farmers already in activity who want to work with donkeys or they can be retired people who want to use a donkey in their own garden, for example. And here, uh, the aim of the school is, is to professionalize the farmers and to increase donkey welfare. There are several courses, initiation, improvement, education of the young working donkey or donkey care. So people uh, can learn to work with donkeys and to take care of them. The donkeys used at school are both trained ones, uh, we call them school donkeys, and uh, young donkeys in training, uh, which the trainees can buy. And uh, the third main uh, purpose of the school is to take part in innovation. So uh, the school um, works with uh, equipment maker to make uh, new tools and new equipment. And they may, the school make uh, studies um, on welfare, for example. And this is where the school works uh, with INET. The aim here is to improve efficiency, donkey welfare, and farmers' work conditions. So, I will let Domitil tell you about uh, one of the projects um, in which uh, the school uh, is uh, involved and uh, which is called Kulan Project. Uh, yeah, thank you, Clementine. So uh, I will talk about uh, the Kulan Project, which is a project uh, that aims to evaluate the comfort of working donkeys. So it's uh, similar to the project from the Donkey Sanctuary that uh, was presented uh, during a previous uh, webinar. Uh, so we are also studying the, the different types of collar, uh, but we had a different approach. So um, in fact, we saw that there were very few data in the literature about uh, donkeys or even about working, don working donkeys. So uh, the first step of our project that I will present is to create references about uh, the comfort of working donkeys and to validate a protocol to analyze uh, its comfort. Uh, so uh, in 2021, we passed a survey to know uh, the farms where we could go and make uh, some measures. And we also used this survey to collect a lot of information about uh, the, the working conditions, the living condition of the donkeys in farms. 
and uh, for uh, we we saw that uh, the main types of collar used were the the traditional collar, the Swiss and the Amish collar. So that's the ones we will uh, study in the in the in the in the project. And uh, we also uh, asked the farmers uh, what they they were thinking of their donkeys at work, and especially if they have already seen uh, tiredness or discomfort of their donkeys. Uh, so for 51% of them, uh, they have already seen uh, fatigue in their donkeys at work, and they uh, and the signs they they saw were the change in gait, the heavy breathing, and the sweat uh, mostly. And the reason uh, were mostly uh, the type of tool or the type of work uh, that they were doing. And for fifty-seven percent of the of the farmers, they had already seen a discomfort uh, in work, uh, mainly with, uh, for example, a lameness uh, at work or a change in the behavior. And for forty-eight percent of them, uh, they said it was uh, due to the equipment and mostly to the collar. So that's why uh, it's very important to study the, the comfort of a different collar at work. So for that, we realized uh, three types of tests. So uh, one test on a treadmill to, to have the same speed of working for each dome kit, uh, an effort test, and uh, uh, some tests in the fields uh, directly. So both at Enam, uh, which uh, Clementine present presented just before, and also in market gardening farm. Uh, for that, we use uh, different references to, to, to qualify the effort. So we considered the effort as important for an heart rate uh, above 120 BPM and for a pulling force superior to 15% of the donkey's weight. So for the pulling force uh, uh, in the literature, this reference was uh, established for a full day of work. So we didn't work that long, but uh, it was interesting to keep this, uh, this reference because uh, it could be extended to the way uh, the, the farmers are working with their donkeys. And uh, finally, we used uh, an ethogram for, be for the behavioral analysis uh, with the different behavior uh, from, uh, from publication for horses at work and donkeys at rest, because we found uh, very few things uh, about uh, donkeys at work. Uh, then we made uh, so three types of measures. Uh, the measure of the heart rate at rest, at work, and during recovery with a heart rate monitor from the, the brand Polar. Uh, we measured the pulling force at work with a dynamometer. And we analyzed the behavior uh, with the analysis of video recordings of the, the profiles of the donkeys at work. And uh, during the treadmill test, we also measured the pressure under the collar and the locomotion, but we didn't have a significant result uh, for now. So we have to do uh, more tests to, to have things about that. And so uh, thanks, to, thanks to the test, we, we have been able to, uh, to validate uh, two behavioral profiles uh, that I represent now because we will use them after. Uh, so we saw uh, a profile of comfort that you can see on the left uh, with mostly uh, one or two ears forward or on the side, uh, beyond vertical forehead, the nostril non tensed, uh, the mouth closed, and uh, the tail uh, above uh, vertical. And on the contrary, on the right, uh, we found a, a profile of discomfort with the ears backwards, the, the tail uh, at the vertical, and the vertical forehead, the nostril tensed, and the mouth opened. 
so that uh, will be user in uh, now. So uh, first we made the test on the frame mill. So we had four donkeys and we measured the heart rate, the pulling force and the behavior. So uh, on the train mill, the donkeys uh, were lifting uh, different charges. So uh, 0, 20, 30 and 40 kilograms during two minutes of effort. And they had one minute of uh, rest between each, uh, each mass. Uh, why just walking without uh, anything to, to pull uh, on the treadmill. So for this test, uh, the results uh, were the following. So we had a low heart rate at work that uh, stayed below 90 BPM for every donkey and every mass lifted. And we had uh, approximately no friction force. So the pulling force is uh, similar to the to the mass lifted, so it stayed below fifteen percent of the of the donkey's weight. So uh, those two parameters show that the effort is moderate, but uh, we saw mostly discomfort behavior. So the ears backward, few movement of ears and tail, a vertical tail, the nostril stance. And we think uh, this discomfort may be linked with the, the stress of the treadmill and of the manipulation because the donkeys had a, a week uh, to uh, have habituation, but they were not used to pull a charge. And also there were many people around the treadmill, the treadmill when we were doing the, the test. So it can entail a stress that uh, would have shown discomfort uh, behavior more than the effort it's itself that were more moderate, in fact. So then we made uh, effort tests. So we had six donkeys at Enam, uh, for which we measured the heart rate and the pulling force by pulling uh, various uh, mass during three minutes of efforts uh, and then one minute 30 at rest. And for that, we had uh, the, uh, an increasing heart rate with the increase of the mass pulled. Uh, the heart rate stayed uh, below 120 BPM uh, for, the, for every donkey. So here is a, an example of a graph that we had the same kind of graph for each donkey. And we saw uh, at the end of the graph that the heart rate recovery is good, even when uh, the pulling force is important. So uh, from uh, 120 kilograms, we found a, a pulling force higher than 15% of the donkey's weight. So it's uh, important, but the heart rate stay, uh, stay adequate. And so finally, uh, we made uh, the field test. So we've separated uh, in the NM tests because it's the first one, uh, the first test that were made and we used it uh, to test the protocol. And then we went on farms to make, uh, to make tests uh, directly uh, with, with the farmers. So at NM, we had four donkeys and we, made, we practiced uh, hoeing during 30 minutes and we measured heart rate, pulling force and behavior. And uh, in farms, uh, we had uh, eight donkeys, but 11 working sessions because some farmers wanted either to test uh, different tools or they had different types of work to do the day uh, we were there. So we had uh, 11 working sessions. And uh, for that, we proposed to farmers to work in their regular working conditions. So um, because it was the high season of market gardening, so uh, we had to, yeah, it had to be beneficial for them too to work with us. So they chose the work they needed, uh, they needed to do. And we also measured the heart rate, the pulling force and the behavior in that case too. So uh, at Enam, we had a mean heart rate that was uh, below 120 BPM, a good uh, uh, heart rate recovery, and the pulling force that stayed uh, under 15% of the donkey's weight. So the effort is moderate. And for the behavior, 
with some mostly comfort indicators with the eyes open, the mouth closed, the tongue non visible, and the normal nostril tension. So uh, the, there were mostly comfort situation in that case. And uh, for the results in the field farm, so we have first on the left, we have the graph uh, representing the heart rate uh, of the different uh, session me measures. Uh, so the mean heart rate stayed below 120 BPM for every, every measure we made. And on the right, uh, we have the, the pulling force for each, uh, each session. And it stayed below 15% of the donkey's weight for uh, who ring works. So the session number one, four, six, and seven. So for those sessions, the pulling force uh, show uh, moderate effort. Whereas uh, for the, the sessions two, three, and five, we can see that the pulling force is higher and it's due to the types of work that were, that were made. So we had the preparation of the soil for session two and three and uh, hooring and wedging for session five uh, that were the associated on the same tools. So those types of work are works that ask uh, that are harder for the donkeys to do. Uh, but even with that, we can see that the, the the heart rate stayed uh, below 120 uh, BPM. And uh, for in farms, we had uh, mostly comfort indicators again with uh, the eyes open, the forehead between zero and 10 degrees, the tail also between zero and 10 degrees, the base of the ears uh, above the reserve, so a high uh, head the mouth closed, uh, the tongue non-visible, and the normal nostril tension in most of the case. So, so we can uh, conclude that uh, with those tests, we were able to create a protocol to analyze the comfort of donkeys at work by measuring their heart rate, their, uh, the pulling force, and their behavior. Uh, we saw also that even when the pulling force was high, the, high, the heart rate uh, stayed relatively low and the recovery was good. And we saw uh, discomfort indicators only uh, on the treadmill. Uh, otherwise, uh, we saw mainly comfort situations and the effort we, we analyzed seemed uh, well adapted to the donkeys. And so what's next for this project? So we will complete the references of working donkeys, especially with the locomotion data at work. So it's uh, one test we need to, to do. And we will uh, also finalize the prototype to measure the pressure between the donkey and the collar. So that's the orange and blue uh, picture you can see. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's a prototype that needs to be tested to know if it's uh, if we can use it uh, on the following part of the project. And for this following part, we will compare different types of collar to evaluate the comfort at work with each type of collar. And uh, we will also, uh, we hope, create a collar well adapted to the comfort. Uh, maybe we will uh, make one with the caves, the the center of analysis of uh, images and uh, sports performance. And uh, another one with the celery percheron on the left that wants to adapt its adjustable color that you can see. Uh, it was made for horses at first, but they want uh, to adapt it uh, for donkeys. So that's uh, some, some uh, axis of, uh, of work. And um, uh, after that, uh, we wanted to talk to you about uh, the different prospects and the different uh, areas of work uh, that are currently uh, currently done or the next studies that we, we will implement. So currently, uh, there's the implementation of certification labels for the working equity for every use in transport, in agriculture, forest, port rate, production. Uh, there's also a thesis about the durability of animal traction. 
and the economical uh, monitoring of the farms. And in the next possibilities, uh, we, we may uh, study the comforts of equids in other activities than market gardening, or study the comfort of equids working with the breast collar, for example. So all of that uh, aims to improve the knowledge, the knowledge about the uh, welfare uh, of rocking equids, which is a growing concern of the users and the society. And we also want to develop the professionalization of the working equity sector, uh, which is important. Thank you for listening. And if you have questions, don't hesitate. Thank you both. May I please ask you to stop sharing the presentation? And again, please. Thanks a lot. I'm just going to change the view here. There we are. Uh, thank you so much for, for this, this great presentation. And it's, it's incredible to see research happening around donkeys and around animal traction. I think it's literally the, the way forward, right? To, to make sure that animals work in, in, in proper conditions. And I'd like to open the session to the, the audience. If you have any question to Clementine or to Domitil, please go ahead. Just open the camera and the microphone. And, and that's it. Well, if, if nobody asks, I'll start asking then. Yeah, uh, please, when uh, have you published the results of the studies? Because uh, I read an article no, when the, the study was being done in the, in the Cahiers des Ans and the publication you have in France. Uh, about donkeys, but I don't know if, if you have uh, published a final conclusion as you presented it today, or that's going to be done. C could you explain better about that or a bit more information? Uh, uh, for the moment, uh, it hasn't been published. Uh, there, there have been some uh, conferences about it uh, at the Yes, you. So it's uh, organized by the French Institute of uh, Horses and uh, and horse riding in France, and we have presented it uh, last year. But uh, as it's only a pre-study, uh, we didn't have published anything yet, and we may publish something when we have uh, finished working on the when we have data on the locomotion. For example, uh, we will do something, but it's uh, it's uh, it's going to be done. Okay, thank you. No, because I think the results of at least of the results of these preliminary studies are quite interesting and good. You know, sometimes to defend that working with donkeys is all right, and mm -hmm. if within the limits of the of the animal, it doesn't mean that you are you know treating the animal badly. So it's it's well, I think it's good to have that kind of a scientific studies to to show them when when you have some critics about that. So, okay. Thank you, Sask. There is any other question, Mr. Hello, Hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, th thank you for the presentation. Um, oh, merci <laughs> for the presentation. Um, it, g going back to what you said. At the beginning, you mentioned certification. Um, is that is that for the products that, that that are produced from the market gardens that use donkeys? Uh, I was talking about um, organic food mainly. Oh, organic food. Okay, because it, yeah. it it strikes me that one of one of the points you made at the end there was uh, with, mm. with your further work was the economics of of this of the system, and it. It seems to me that that um, one of the one of the most important points for particularly small farms is the the profitability of of using animals as opposed to, to as opposed to machine traction, and it it seems that that, that there may be some mileage. I don't, I don't know what you think in in your organisations actually certificating food um, that has been produced by using. Um, working animals as a, as a, as a, as a quality kite mark. Um, 
and perhaps pushing that with if, if you want to spread the 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 use of donkeys um into other farms that may be that, that may excuse the pun but they may, that may have traction with other farmers as well yeah, we, um, we have another certification uh, with another organization which is called the um, france energy animal okay. and they have a certification for uh, products made with horses and donkeys but um, I don't think that now there is an economical uh, advantage uh, when you have this certification. Uh, it's mainly for uh, for uh, giving uh, to the consumer an idea of how you produce your food and yeah. the quality of your food. Uh, but I don't think uh, the the price of uh, the vegetables is higher. If you have this certification, okay, okay. I, I was just—it wasn't really. A, it was—it was a comment more than a question, really. Yeah, but it—it uh, it exists. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that—but that economic aspect is quite. It's going to be quite an important area of the project, I think. Yeah, and uh, we we have a problem in our society uh, with people thinking we don't have to work with animals, and animals should be left. Uh, alone uh, in the wild so um, some farmers uh, don't know if they have to to say that they work with animals they, they are not sure uh, it's uh, yeah it depends okay thanks if, if you allow me roger that that last aspect that clementine just mentioned is is a common aspect that some of the factory members uh, refer in in other meetings we have you know it's like should i use this as a good thing, keeping in mind that the most of my clients come from a very urban environment where they think that animal traction should not be used. So you know, it's it's yeah. it's a it's a discussion happening, mm. uh, and it is this certification process. For example, two years ago in the fact, well, just before COVID, the last AGM that we had, uh, the Germans were trying to start a certification process, right? A kind of green stamp. Uh, that certifies that farm and that does things with, with animal traction. And they were trying to work because yeah. it's not enough to do things with animal traction. You need to do things right. You need yeah, to look sure. you know, all the welfare around the animals should be certified as well. So it is a complex process. And between the 15 or 16 of us that no one listened, us in the Iberia Peninsula, we were actually hoping that the Germans to do something so we can say, well, if Germans can do it, maybe we can follow the example because we understood in that moment that it was a, it, it is not an easy uh, process, you know, and if you go that route, you need to make sure that you keep in mind every single aspect. So you have something to, you know, the idea of a stamp is somehow a protection for those farmers who decided to work with animal traction, you know, should not yeah. be a, a, a trump for them, you know, it should be. Hmm. Thanks, Roger. Do we have any other question? Well, I have a few, so but I was controlling myself because <laughs> in case somebody else wants to to ask, uh, because uh, well, I'm I'm from a Catalan uh, animal traction association and very close to France, obviously, and and we are just uh, always looking up what our neighbors are doing uh, because uh, we have so much to learn. And the use of donkeys is one of the things that we are trying to, to spread. Myself, convinced by, by Joao, I'm, I'm an owner of two donkeys. Uh, and I'm You're a growth with... owner of two donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, my, my, my question would be, are there uh, any studies or statistics about uh, with how many animals, are usually the farms that they use donkeys, uh, how many animals do they have? and which is the size of the land they, they work and how many people work in those uh, small farms. It's just to have a little bit of the idea of what is the, the scale that it's being in France uh, proved that it's more realistic and it works better. Do you have any figures, data about that? Or... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I talked about uh, this but we have more detailed uh, data uh, 
the farms are not big farms and they have uh, one or two donkeys. Um, if, if you're interested, uh, we can send you the, the data, but it's in French, of course. <laughs> so we don't, uh, we don't have uh, uh, an English uh, paper <laughs> on this. No problem about that. I started uh, learning French three years ago just to be able to read the, the information about yeah, animal it, traction um, in French. So, so I would be more than, than interested in getting it and practicing my French as well. So, yeah, be... if someone wants to read the paper, um, mm -hmm. you can go on the website Energy Cheval. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there are a lot of uh, documentation. Uh, some we made and some other people made, uh, mm -hmm. and this is on the on the website. Maybe it's a little difficult to to find because uh, there there are a lot of uh, of things, mm -hmm. but uh, you can find um, some um, some detailed uh, explanation on uh, ten farms. So mm -hmm. we have. Um, a description of what they do uh, with uh, economic uh, aspect, technical aspect. Uh, yeah. okay, thank, you. thank you. Do you have any other question? I, don't, I do have a question, a more technical question. Uh, as you may be aware, I was part of the team who developed a similar study with with collars and with donkeys. And one of the key aspects that we actually took into account that was the way the collars will fit the neck of the animals. And for that, we had to change the hitching point. So in a collar for horses is assumed that is, it's a point that divides the collar in one lower thirds and two, uh, and the upper two thirds. So it's like 33%. But in donkeys, what we realize, and we use very similar, we use the Zamorano donkeys that is very similar with the ones you show. If we just kept that uh, hitching point, the collars will not fit. And that's a basic, it's, it's due to the, the basic an anatomy of donkeys. So we change it to 45, 55%. And my question is, did you have that into consideration when you test, you did those preliminary tests with the collars? Uh, we didn't directly uh, took that into consideration, uh, but in fact, we uh, made measures uh, only on, uh, on, on, on collars that uh, were, were designed uh, and sold especially for donkeys. So we made the, the measures to uh, see, so we didn't uh, analyze it for now, but we took the, the measures to see if uh, it, was, uh, it was good for every, uh, every collars and every donkeys we tested. But uh, we, as it was sold, uh, especially for donkeys and for a part of uh, the collar tested, uh, the, all the American, the Amish uh, collars are made uh, on measures, so we we didn't uh, direct we didn't for now took that took the the fitting of the collar into consideration, but uh, it's something uh, we we will uh, we will took uh, took into consideration after in the next parts. Any other question? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll peep. Come on, let's you go. Are there we go. Okay, so I I just wanted to ask uh, Clementine whether the Inet will send a representative to our annual general meeting <laughs> in Spain. Uh, no, but the meeting will be with you, but uh, not uh, not in person, uh, but uh, with the computer. <laughs> okay. And uh, Thierry Rabier, uh, the president, uh, will be too. Okay, thank you. With pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions, Ask? You have yeah, well, I will have the, the final one then, just okay. because if, if not, it's only me. But I was writing them here. It's about, uh, you, you talk about the school, you, uh, there's in France about training people and, and donkeys to, to, to work in, in market garden. 
could you explain more or less uh, how much time is each course or how, how is it structured because uh, we're trying to do something similar here in Catalonia and, and, and when we're talking about market garden we always find this complicated because uh, in the sense that if you want to see the whole process of producing vegetables uh, it goes quite fast in the sense that first you have to prepare the soil but when everything is working uh, it's difficult to train people because they are they have to attend their own their own uh, allotments so how do you structure it do you do it all over the year you do it uh, just one period of the time very short and with theoretical uh, contents or i don't know if you could explain a bit about that formation for market garden with donkeys in france yeah we um, we focus on the donkeys uh, so um, people have to do another training um, to know more about uh, vegetables and uh, technical aspects of uh, agriculture. The school is uh, mainly uh, to, to learn to work with donkeys and uh, they don't see uh, uh, all, the, all the production uh, process uh, at the school. Yeah, they see they see some tools, different tools, um, but uh, this is mainly about donkeys. Okay, and and how long is uh, one course, more or less? Or is it a whole year? Is it several months, several weeks? No, the, um, there are um, uh, several courses. The first is to discover the donkey. So I think is it's uh, two days uh, i don't remember exactly and then uh, if you want to learn more you can do another um, and it's a lot uh, a, a little longer uh, i think maybe one week and um, if you want to do all the different uh, sessions uh, it's a, a, a few weeks in a, in a year it's not uh, it's not too long and it's it's something that it's growing in in france do you do you see more people and i'm just asking because i don't know if you realize but over the last month the price of diesel increased a little bit <laughs> so uh, i'm just i'm just curious to to understand if it's it's a trend that you see happening or because of the way things are, you see more people wanting to start using animal traction. Yes, 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 it's growing and uh, uh, people want to buy donkeys, but uh, it's difficult to find uh, educated uh, and specialized uh, donkeys. Uh, yes, there, there are more and more people uh, wanting uh, to do this. Okay. Thank you, last round of questions. Well, if we don't have any more questions, uh, I'd just like to say thank you to Clement and Bonin and to Domitil Fauvel for joining us today. It was a real pleasure to have you with, with us. Thank you to all the participants who attended this, this webinar. It's been almost two years since we started this, this project and it's always nice to, to learn every month about a new topic. Uh, in, in April, we'll not have a, a regular webinar because it's going to be our, um, our AGM. But we'll be back in May with, with more webinars. So just follow us on, on Facebook or on our web page and you, you keep an eye on, on the next ones. Thank you so much for joining us today and have, have a good evening. Bye-bye.